All right. Hopefully we're recording here. <laughs> yep, we are recording started. All right, cool. All right. Uh, hey, Tom, how are you? I'm good, Mike. Hey, we're the first, the last, the nerdum, and Happy New Year. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Happy New Year. This is the uh, we we uh, we finish our main show and uh, look for that uh, out there uh, along with our uh, ever growing back catalog for the last year and change that we've been doing this thing. Uh, this is our weekly show, uh, which we uh, release on Wednesdays, and uh, we hold oh boy, we've been on hiatus for a few ex- extra weeks. Um, I took an extra week. Uh, I appreciate you giving me the time. I'm sure you enjoyed your downtime too. Um, boy, uh, I think what I said was like when we were having a little pre-conversation was, uh, uh, boy, they, they were, they were trying to break their neck to uh, get the last bit of cringe in for the end of the year. (laughs) And then they started the year and they're still, they're still going at it hard to uh, try to just be, get everything in. Yeah. (laughs) Just silly. Well, anyway, with that, uh, um, I'm, I'm Mike and, uh, and as Tom said, uh, Mm -hmm. he introduced himself and I just want to kind of cover us real quick. Um, we are the, uh, the first, the last, and the nerd dumb. Oh, you know what? I got to share my screen. Hey, Mike. Hey, hey, <laughs> share sir. your screen. Be good. Yeah. Share your screen. Yeah. There you go. Now, now you know what I'm talking about here. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, all the silliness aside here, uh, this is a social blade that, which you brought up, which we are, we are currently, uh, passing as it yeah. were. Of course, I have no idea. Neither is Thomas. What the hell they're, uh, what the heck they're, uh, they're, they're ranking us on and all that good mm-hmm. stuff. But uh, hey, yep. that's cool. Hey, we got ninety one uploads too. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. And we were we, this we created this November eighth, which we just celebrated not too long ago, uh, back in November, mm-hmm. as the uh, as the uh, clock turned. Uh, but yep. in any case, uh, this is our yep. YouTube channel, and uh, we would boy we, before we get into it this week for a grab bag, we would sure love it if you could uh, circle over there. Uh, it'll be in the description. Uh, if you could mm-hmm. circle over there and give us a little love uh, or hate, that's fine too. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, yep. or commentary, maybe maybe none of the above, or maybe hey, just want to watch. Yeah, hey, we we would like you to subscribe with love, but if you hate, subscribe us. That's cool too. We'll we'll take Absolutely. either way, either way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, we we gained a couple of subscribers uh, recently, and uh, we just want to keep getting those numbers going up. If you look on, if you saw on our social blade, we're pretty ranked uh, pretty low on our uh, uh, on their uh, their rankings. We're getting a C a C, so we're passing. But uh, we'd love to uh, make a bit of a more of a dent in the uh, YouTube. Uh, multiverse, as so to speak. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, I think we picked up a couple of subscribers uh, not too long ago, and uh, shout out to uh, to those uh, guys. Uh, one of them was uh, was watching a snow snow dub. I'll have it in the description on Twitter. Anyway, uh, YouTube. It was kind of cool little hangout that they had going on there. Had about twenty people watching. Uh, uh, so I'll give a proper shout out to that <laughs> in the description. <laughs> Um, but in our, if you're also curious, we're also both pretty active on the on uh, the uh, good old Twitter. Uh, Thomas uh, is uh, at McAllister underscore T. Uh, I guess you could have said that. I don't need to say it for you, but uh, I don't know why I did that. So anyway, maybe you can say mine uh, in, in, in place of that. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking Jewish. <laughs> oh, I am. I, um... Uh, they, well, uh, no, no, they, no, no, no. That, that's what it is. It's sofa, <laughs> like sofa you sit on, king, like a crown. Yeah, Jewish. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now YouTube might might ding us because they might they might have thought we said something else, but maybe but you never know. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, kind of pulling it back here. Uh, so what, what do you want to start off with? Because uh, we had a pretty busy week, uh, or pretty busy a few weeks. The last time we met and talked. And, yeah. Uh, and, I think our, our big story this week is uh, we were going to talk about uh, the the new year. Last year, we're ringing out last year, ringing in the new year. Last year, um, I forget what the Chinese said it was, uh, but uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I, I uh, was uh, terming it the year of cringe uh, yeah. because it uh, everybody was uh, cringing out. Uh, last year, uh, we, we had true. a, uh, I forget exactly what the first cringe thing was, but I think it was the slap, wasn't it? The slap. Oh God. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happened in January. Yeah. That happened in January last year, about this mm-hmm. time or somewhere, so somewhere thereabouts. 
mm-hmm. and it was the slap that was heard around the world. You're <laughs> right. We did start off the year very lame. Yeah, yeah uh, very, very, very lame. Cringe tastic. If you were uh, maybe uh, living under a rock last year and aren't <laughs> sure what we're talking about, uh, Will Smith uh, gave uh, Chris Rock a little bit of a love tap on the face <laughs> <laughs> for uh, for not showing much love for his wife making a GI Jane two <laughs> joke uh, concerning her uh, hair or that the the lack thereof. So. Right. Yeah, so we, we rang in the year with that bit of cringe. Uh, on the other side of the year, we uh, talk about big celebrities. Uh, Kanye West uh, cringed out as well. Oh my very, gosh. very much. <laughs> yes, yes, he did. Yes, he did. He, uh, he, uh, yes, he did. Yeah, let's all say about that. <laughs> that yeah, that's uh, the less said, the better. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm sure there's. Uh, yeah, if you, if you have your favorite cringe moment from last year, put it in uh, put it in the comments down below. I'm sure we're missing uh, some of those because uh, oh, cr- when you cringe, you just kind of try to avoid it. So yeah, <laughs> I was trying to think yeah. of a, a few of them, but yeah. Um, and then, um, as far as the YouTube uh, sphere of things, there was a lot of cringe as well there. Um, oh my God! Yeah, endless. <laughs> we we've we covered some of it, uh, but yeah, the one that that kept cringing and cringed throughout the year. Uh, we didn't talk about it much, but Ethan Ralph. I think um, I, I forgot to tell you. Uh, maybe maybe you want to pull up his chair video while we talk about him. Okay. But uh, but he's an individual that started off on YouTube. He's kind of fell off into. Uh, we won't even promote his where he uh, streams now. But uh, but yeah, he's a very cringeworthy individual. Uh, to tell you how cringy he is, uh, to uh, to own somebody, he went to Portugal. Uh, now this year he went there twice. Both times he got his ass beat <laughs> uh, the first time he got knocked in the eye so hard it it, uh, it fractured the uh the bone around it kind of knocked him actual cross-eyed he's actually cross-eyed now so that <laughs> he has to wear sunglasses um <laughs> and then he went back again and um some other guys that he had beefs with on youtube showed up and uh, kicked his butt there, there as well again. Uh, he also, <laughs> he's also currently in Mexico uh, because he violated, I, I believe, allegedly uh, violated his uh, court order. Um, he, uh, he got, um, he didn't get convicted of um, revenge porn, uh, but uh, I forget forget the the legal oh, ease for it. He kind of accepted. <laughs> yeah, that of course because I got sucked into this cesspool. Uh, <laughs> he had a tie in with Rakeda, with uh-huh. Nick Rakeda, because he asked him to look at something as a lawyer, and yep. mm-hmm. uh, and he Nick's talked about that uh, from time to time. Mm-hmm. Uh, for yeah. sure, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I was wondering. But, it kind of was like, yeah. well, I guess, I, I guess it's something. <laughs> but to avoid getting, uh, and this was this involved his um, baby mama, his first baby mama. Uh, but uh, he's currently in Mexico trying to avoid being served uh, papers and facing uh, possible jail time for that. So he's down in Mexico. Uh, but yeah, so uh, so yeah, that's that's fun. Now, um, at the the end of the year, he also uh got into it. He's getting married to his second baby mama, uh, and I I believe he's getting married this year. Uh, but he, Ralph, being Ralph, he got into it with the in laws. He's fighting her father on Twitter, and <laughs> there there's a there's good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good old Ethan yeah. Ralph, but uh, but yes, yeah, so he's fighting with his uh, his father-in-law, his, his soon-to-be father-in-law, and he's <laughs> in, in uh, Ethan Ralph uh, fashion. He's uh, actually at the, towards the end of this month, he's going to do a wrestling a wrestling event called Ralph Mania, and he bought this two thousand dollar. A uh, wrestling belt <laughs> that he left in the hands of his 
uh, father-in-law, as father-in-law is refusing it to give it to him. <laughs> Oh man, that's so funny. Because so, you know, they're beefing. Uh, but yeah, yeah. You're, you're showing the video. See, he's got his sunglasses on because if he took them off, uh, you would see his cross eyes from being knocked in the head <laughs> in Portugal. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, well, he's uh, he's got... Uh, uh, whenever he comes up, it, it, I was kind of always in the back of my mind, but it, it, what it is, this is the 20, uh, 21st century version of Jerry Springer. <laughs> this is like this is he is like an endless uh, Jerry Springer segment, uh, but it's but real life. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we yeah, uh, for sure, yeah, for sure. and we just did the cliff notes. There's the if you yeah, want to do a did. deep deep dive on him, uh, we're showing uh, Sunrise Productions uh, video here. She does a great job of clipping him. So if you just want to go all in on him, watch watch <laughs> uh, watch a bunch of her videos. She. Uh, she pretty much just kind of makes compilation videos. There's no voiceovers or anything, so it's just Ralph speaking for himself. So <laughs> right. he makes he makes the case of him being a cringe all by himself. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, they're they're endless cringe there. Yeah, I, I suppose that. Yeah, that I don't really. Uh, the, yeah, the uh, what was the uh, what was the the comedian to uh, sh- switching gears? The uh, that 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 jack wagon uh i can't think of his name but i i agree with i think ethan ralph takes the cake for uh consuming all the cringe oxygen uh as it were out of the room for sure yeah and the the cringe that we actually covered uh and created the cringe quarter for was deaf noodles we talked about him and his uh comedy (laughs) showdown or whatever (laughs) yeah and uh the last one that we did um he uh was the one where salvo pancakes showed up and (laughs) they they had their their beef uh watch watch that video if you want to deep dive on that and our um uh coverage on the comedian but uh (laughs) but yeah salvo pancakes came out uh looking pretty good uh all told on that video but towards the end of the year, like uh, Mike said, everybody was trying to get the cringe in. Uh, there was a lot of people exposing him. A lot of his, he's, uh, Salvo Pancakes mar- is married, uh, but all of these women came out uh, letting people know that <laughs> he's been cheating on his wife. <laughs> and uh, there's uh, sort of a, he has uh, some weird fetishes. Uh, the one involving, um, some bodily fluid, uh, <laughs> uh, pee. <laughs> so, <Okay>. so yeah. <laughs> so very cringe, very cringe. So, so even the people we think are cool, uh, kind of proves that they aren't. So you gotta, gotta be careful who you, uh, follow. And, <laughs> uh, also, um, there's a, um, one of the comic books guys that I, uh, follow. It came out towards the end of the year that, uh, he was actually he was in a porn. Uh, there was a porn being filmed in a shoe store, and he was one of the bystanders watching. And oh, it, it, evidently, evidently, the woman he brought with him or was with in the video gets in on the action a little bit. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, wow. so yeah, there's there's that that's been going around. Uh, there's uh, um, some videos on the the kiwi farms about it. So and that's a that's a site that. If you go oh, to, you're going to uh, on your own. We're not suggesting you go there. Definitely not. But, uh, but yeah, if you do, uh, you'll find some things uh, very low-cal in nature. Uh, but, yeah. And then you also covered, uh, as far as cringe, um, uh, um, Tozy and the Crypto Bro or whatever his name yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that uh, Jack Wagon. Yeah, and and he's still nipping at him once in a while too. Yeah, and then uh, we have a we have a repeat from Matozzi too because I think um, there's like kind of like a, a macro kind of zooming out. Speaking of that, uh, is the latest cringe that to kick off this year is like probably one of the biggest self-made YouTubers on the planet, uh, arguably uh, credit where due, Logan Paul, uh, who oh. has been no shortage he uses it for his uh he'll make money from it from if he messes up but like this one oh boy but anyway we'll have some we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later with the toesy i got I, I got a video from him that i love and you actually he was one of your uh youtube channel picks from last year uh which you recommended uh, i think early on too 
Uh, and it's been uh, he uh, it's been very interesting to uh, see him pick up the mainstream news and things that, that are going on, especially with the. Uh, this latest thing we'll get yeah. into that later too yeah that's one of the but, things yeah. that uh, is out there but yeah, yeah. so kind of going there boy uh go, going from cringe to weird to just uh, maybe live in interesting times i thought maybe fate would let up off of the interesting pedal a little bit mm-hmm. no not at all mm-hmm. no sir no sir because what do we have the, I would <laughs> when you saw this whole thing happen what was your mm-hmm. thoughts as a comic book reader like uh like uh, uh, what, what I'm talking about is the Batman uh, comic uh, uh, so with the Joker uh, and uh, becoming uh, <laughs> pregnant, giving birth to a. Yeah, if you scroll down, the, they show the uh, the pictures from the comic. OK, um, it's basically a nothing burger. Um, I, I actually collect the comic book. Uh, it comes from right. uh, uh, the Joker, the current Joker series, the Joker um, I think it's the uh, subtitles, uh, uh, the the Joker that doesn't laugh or something like that. So basically, what what uh, DC is currently doing, they're putting out comic books. Um, their main titles like Action Comics with Superman uh, and Batman and Detective Comics is they're they're charging a little bit extra now for them, uh, but they have the main twenty two page story. Uh, and then there's a backup eight page story. Uh, now when they first started it doing that, uh, they would they would have a, a different writer and artist do the backup story. A lot of times they weren't quite as good as the others. Uh, but what they're doing currently is having that the same main writer uh, write both the main story and the backup. Uh, so the the main story in the Joker comic books very serious. There's uh, two, uh, two, maybe three Jokers going on in that, uh, but it's more of a grittier art style, more realistic. And the ba- <laughs> the backup stories are very wacky, very much Silver Age sort of sort stories. Um, they may be tied to the main story, but right now they're just they're they're sort of like a parody of those old Silver Silver Age comics. And okay, so okay. the story is. Very much over the top, very goofy. Campy. The right. he, the Joker and his wacky henchmen. One's a gorilla, and the other one is a midget. Uh, or or <laughs> I, I should be politically correct. Um, kind of a, a dwarf sized person. And right. either one or both of them gets killed in each comic book. They come back in the next installment. So <laughs> so basically, it's just a goofy sort of story. Um, it, so he, he becomes pregnant, but it's actually, um, mud in a stomach and he ends up throwing it up and it turns out to be maybe clay, uh, the clay man or whatever his name is. Right. Um, right. and so, so yeah, and it, it forms into a little smaller joker. So I guess he right. does actually give birth, but, but yeah, it's people yeah. are, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because I was watching all these people, uh, discuss it and it hit mainstream media like right. I, I pulled a story from the new york post but and, right and and a lot of people are clutching their pearls and saying that this is a sign of the t- deterioration of dc and the downfall that it's it's just a goofy story it's well, not well, not meant to be taken seriously it's yeah. just very over the top very surreal very stupid <laughs> right <laughs> my, my yeah i didn't really take this seriously like i didn't <laughs> i didn't really see how this kind of floated to like mainstream political whatever blah 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 blah, blah, blah. what I, I didn't really take it as that really honestly i see it as like <clears throat> you guys not know how comics work like you, you not know like there's like a half a billion stories that they like write a comic book and then they close it up, dead end it, and bury it, and it never comes back again. You know, like there's a billion ways. Plus, you can tell it's like not the main. It's like a like a Silver Age. You know, like it, the artwork is different from like what you know serious Batman comics are or whatever. You know, like so it's like nothing. I agree with you, nothing burger. Like yeah, I yeah, thought, thought it was like interesting, like to see. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very clickbaity. I mean, the the picture alone is is kind of uh, shocking, and people go like, "What's what's going on here?" And <laughs> you know, the, yeah, um, I'd say there's I'd say this is an exercise in in a lot of folks just uh, not being able to hold their powder, uh, <laughs> or they or they yeah. fire their shot. 
like it's like, yeah, maybe you should have held your powder a little bit longer. But uh, you know what? Those guys out there are probably also trying to make money on YouTube oh, yeah. too. So like, this yeah, is their bread and butter. Yeah, it's it very, were. very clickbaity. And then uh, I was going, to, <laughs> I paired this with a with the channel, um, casually comics. Uh, that she does a, a very good job. Um, her video came out just today about this, right. and she covers the <laughs> the comic uh, as well as the phenomena, uh, the reaction, whether or not this was intentionally baity. Um, she does a really good deep dive into this. Uh, and I recommend her channel because I watched several of her videos. She does a very good job. Uh, I, I recommended comic tropes, uh, um, you know, several grab bags back, and he does a great job on the history of things. Uh, but she right. does she does a great job of digging in and looking at different controversies or different storylines, and really digs in and kind of gives you. A uh, very balanced view of how you know if it's controversial, she looks at both sides of things, um, and she does a, a very in-depth, kind of thought-provoking kind of discussion of of various topics. And she's actually kind of changed my opinion, or, or kind of nurtured my opinion on things, uh, or, or made me think about things that I, I didn't uh, think about because she kind of goes at it as a slightly different viewpoint than I do. And but then that's that's very very good. Um, you know, it, it's always great to have a, a different op opinion or view that that um, gets you gets you to think. And uh, she she comes highly recommended. I, I you know if you're definitely into comic books, she does a great job of kind of discussing mm -hmm. uh, various various topics. Some uh, you know <laughs> very popular ones like the Joker uh, being pregnant, uh, as well as she kind of get kind of digs in on. Uh, maybe sort of the minutia of, of comics as well. That's good. It's always good to have a have a, a, a backup uh, or a good good fresh opinion on comics. I, sometimes the the guys I listen to can be well. I go through phases. You know, I'll go through phases where I'll, I'll watch, listen to a bunch of them, and then I'll kind of kind of get sucked into another YouTube direction wherever that goes. You know, who knows? There's always something pulling you one direction or another on YouTube. That's cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, I was looking then, forward uh, to uh, good YouTube uh, recommendations yeah. for sure. Oh, and then to oh. get back, get back to the cringe of the year. Uh, I think the maybe the biggest cringe was Andrew Tate <laughs> to to end out oh. the year. Uh, I think um, we kind of skipped over him. Oh, where did uh, it go? Where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. Yep. Yeah. yeah oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <For> and sure. <laughs> uh, there's a. Uh, there's a video uh, by Tamimi, I think is her name, uh, but uh, but yeah, she does a really good deep dive into the story, his backstory, as well as the current cringe. Uh, if you're living under a rock, I think uh, everybody's uh, everybody on Facebook, even my um, uh, older <laughs> friends, ha are, are have been exposed to the uh, the meme with. Uh, the pizza box and uh, Greta Thunberg. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, saw that. I saw that erupt on the on the on the Twitter sphere uh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, evidently, yeah, the um, the Romanian police have have arrested him and his brother and a couple of uh, lady associates of his for uh, possibly, I think it's. Um, Human trafficking <laughs> is yeah, the, the uh, alle allegation, we'll say, uh, because we yeah, and I I watched that happen, and at first I was like nobody really knew what was going on, uh, and there's a lot of things going flying, and then after the dust kind of clears, like no, no, he was being arrested and detained by the authorities, and then I think uh, the last thing I heard was they had uh, confiscated his car collection or something like that or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so he's yeah, definitely which... behind bars for sure. Uh, he is not. And then I saw, um, I might, if I can find it in a little bit here, I'll, I'll pop it in the, uh, in the, in the notes here. Yeah. But, uh, but... he, uh, he, he had like, uh, they dug up a clip of basically him talking about how he, how you run a, a, a cam business. And I'll let that be, uh, you can go figure out what that is, but I don't think you need too much of an imagination. <laughs> right. Uh, but like, you know, he's talking about openly, like, Basically, openly, openly talking about how you know you you could scam people, and and just keep taking all these guys you know for go to town like months. And he's bragging about how like 
it's endless. Like these guys, they'll they'll do their thing and they'll keep they'll always come back or whatever. So it's just kind of interesting. Like uh, a lot of the same people that he would prey upon or or talk to or also um, his biggest fans, I guess. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But uh, yeah, uh, uh, it, it's just interesting. Yeah, yeah uh, he, him and um, Jack Murphy, uh, he was an- another cringe person from uh, oh, last God, year. <laughs> yeah, he went down hard like that. Yeah. He's, well, he's going down even harder. Yeah, <laughs> Jack, Jack Murphy can at least walk a free man, uh, yeah. as far as I know. But like, yeah. Uh, the... So, so yeah, the him and um, Andrew Tate were the big progenitors of the alpha male teaching the young boys how to be a male and blah blah blah. Jack Murphy got taken down earlier this year because um, yeah. some videos of him being, uh, sh- uh, and also an article he wrote about being. Uh, a cuckold or uh, being a cuck um kind of right. destroyed destroyed his uh paradigm of being the alpha male uh and, and so so andrew tate uh just to kind of cover it just in case you don't know uh again he's uh kind of uh you know he's showing off his cars he's smoking his cigars and promoting the big alpha male uh thing and then he decided to front on this. Um, I think she's just turned 20, so she's no longer a teenager. Um, Greta Thunberg, uh, she's sort of a, a um, activist for the environment. And we won't even get into that. But he posted right. a, <laughs> a uh, tweet to her to own her telling about all the uh, uh, gas guzzling cars that he has that's destroying the environment and ask uh, for her email so he could send her the details i think or something like that and uh so she uh replied back uh and saying uh, that her email was small dick energy at something.com and and so really really owned him uh no matter how you feel about greta or andrew oh she 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 really she she really blasted him and she she had she had a a nukem from orbit disc for sure (laughs) i mean she owned him on that yeah yeah, and uh, how do you come back from that? You don't, but he tried to with a video, and um, he yeah, had a yeah. he had a he, he was smoking a cigar with his robe on, and he had some pizza boxes there uh, right. that, that weren't biodegradable. And the big rumor was that and someone tweeted out that that pizza box was how the Romanian uh, police found out that he was in Romania and that they were they arrested him, <laughs> which is which is totally bogus. They knew he right. was in Romania because he had uh, been tweeting out pictures of him being in Romania prior right. on Twitter. So, but it but it made for great memes, and uh, we all had a big laugh on uh, Andrew Tate, Greta Thunberg, and the pizza boxes. So, right. Uh, <laughs> well, it, and, and and before he had uh, before his his little his little uh, thing with the law uh, came about, um, I'm sure I'm sure he was on somebody's list somewhere. They knew where that guy was going if he came in or out of the country. They, they they're not dumb. Yeah, they're not dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like just think like what well, the more this plays out, the more it kind of it, it kind of leans in the favor of like I think we're gonna have the very first uh, uh, head on a pike uh, for 2023 and not too long. We'll see. Who knows? Like who who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah I, so that- I, one thing I, I I do tend to believe that um. This guy's gone for for forever because um, I did try to like look at and find his response to like what happened or whatever. Mm-hmm. And according like what he was saying, he was claiming that he got swatted or whatever. <laughs> and that's yeah. like why all these cops showed up and it's like, no, nah, bro, you didn't get swatted, dude. You got arrested. You got, mm. you got you got you got you got picked up, man. Like there's no hiding that. So like whatever, mm-hmm. whatever that whatever his thing is. But of course. We kind of learned, uh, well, anyway. No, but yeah, no. if you want a, a deep dive again, that Tamimi video that uh, we'll we'll include a link to that as well. She does a great job of uh, covering the whole thing uh, from beginning Absolutely. to end, uh, and her videos are really good. She kind of talks about various dramas either on YouTube or outside of YouTube, and uh, she's I, I think she's kind of on the younger side, but but she does a very in depth and really good job of of covering things. I definitely recommend her channel. Uh, kind of look at it and see if uh, if uh, one of the topics look interesting. Just give it a watch. Uh, but yeah, and uh, especially this video, she does a really good job of just covering everything. This is the best video I've seen on Andrew Tate uh, on on YouTube on this. So 
That's good. Uh, definitely, yeah. definitely check it out. Uh, but yeah, that kind of wraps up the cringe uh, <laughs> corner for uh, for 2021 uh, or 22. What am I thinking? Uh, right. So that was uh, that was the year of the cringe. We're welcoming in this new year, 2023, and I'm pro- the the Chinese say it's the year of the rabbit. I say screw that. It's the year of the nerdum. Uh, we're just gonna get <laughs> better and bigger and better uh, this year. And everything's gonna be cool. Everything's gonna be in the nerdum, um, and we'll uh, we'll we'll give it to you all here. So don't don't miss out on our channel. Don't miss out a video, or you'll Absolutely. be uh, be kind of lost. You won't know what to do with yourself if you don't uh, keep up with us this year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and with that, uh, speaking of that, uh, for the for the new year, um, there's a there, there's a slate of bunch of movies that are coming out for 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of I saw this um, come out and then I marked up like what I would want to see, what I would not want to see, um, et cetera. But um, I just thought like maybe we would uh, cover this real quick uh, and then see if there's anything that you're looking forward to uh, for sure or that you'll actually make it out to a theater. I guess there's two questions that I have <laughs> uh, for, uh, for us in general. Like one, uh, are any of these on here going to get you out uh, to go to the theater? And if so. Uh, which ones like I would, I'm really curious to see or or even ones that you're just looking forward to when they come to streaming or whatever, because uh, there's a there's a few here that are definitely I I know. Well, I already kind of know one um, that uh, that that uh, that I I'm, I kind of driving a point here. Well, not really, but uh, uh, one of one of these I know for sure you uh, you and I would definitely um, try to try to go see it for sure. If not, I, well, I know I'm going to see it at least probably three times uh, unless it's like really terrible but we'll see we'll see yeah, I, 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 I know I, you don't have to say it you don't have to say it i know exactly which one uh we're gonna yeah. see it numerous times in the theater we'll cheer it and love it that's barbie yeah right, right? barbie <laughs> barbie's barbie's yeah. the one barbie barbie uh-huh. races a maybe and the only thing to say that because <laughs> ryan gosling is in there and like i'm kind of like uh ryan gosling he's funny he's a, he's a good actor he can do funny he can do serious so i'm kind of curious so like uh although that that makes my maybe list uh on this but uh i was gonna uh, I'll, zing uh, through him. yeah that was just kind of a joke but uh right. it's actually has some uh, some good pedigree like you said ryan gosling's in it it's directed it by it's directed by greta gerwig which is uh, a very established uh, director that I enjoy, I've enjoyed uh, a couple of her movies. Uh, it's written by her and uh, Noah Baumbach, which is her husband. Uh, but Noah yep. Baumbach is a really good writer. He uh, co-wrote some of um, Wes Anderson's movies. Um, sure. And uh, so, yeah, he's, he's, he's actually a good writer. And, I, and so, yeah, I, I'm kind of curious what they're, <laughs> how they're approaching Barbie. Yep. It must be yeah. in a uh, kind of a kind of a kind of quirky sort of way, so it it, it, I, it has the potential of being good. Yeah, that, that's why that's why I say maybe because like I mean, how else are you gonna do Barbie like that? You know, you, you're gonna aside from the nostalgia and the you know the the uh, the uh, just fan service that it is aside, just putting mm-hmm. that for aside and, and the cynicalness on that side, just on the more positive side of life. I mean. You know, maybe it'll be fun. It'll maybe it'll just be like a like movies used to be, where you show up and you're entertained. Is it going to win a, an uh, award? No, but did you have a good time? Was it worth your worth your time? Absolutely. You know, so hopefully maybe hope hope springs eternal. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one that I definitely um, I kind of want to see in the theater, uh, kind of, is because uh, it's going to be the start of something brand new. Uh, so it was the very one top. I uh, just kind of going from. Uh, chronologically, uh, left to right, uh, Megan. I've heard. Uh, I've heard. I've heard that there's a slow little bit of pitter patter, the slow build up of like, it's it's one to see uh, for sure. And like because of horror, and you uh, giving me that gift uh, over the last year, uh, I kind of actually am really looking forward to see it because I think it could really work nowadays. Um, and I'm sure there's a bunch of Netflix movies or that are kind of similar like that, mm-hmm. uh, like where you have some kind of tech thing and a horror component to it. Mm-hmm. They do that very well. Yeah. Uh, Megan, but, Megan's a doll as well. So Megan and Barbie, it's the, it's right. the year of the year, of the doll, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but yeah. The, yeah, the the movie that uh, Mike was alluding to that we'll most likely both uh, see in the theater is Dune Probably, Two, yeah. Dune Two, The Electric Boogaloo. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dune Part Two. Yeah, it's uh, it, we've uh, kind of said that that's sort of what started the channel is the uh, first Dune movie. So yeah, that's uh, sure. going to be a, a big one for us. Uh, but yeah, to get back to your um, uh, left to right um. Uh, thing there uh cocaine bear uh is one that uh i don't know if we'll see it and i'll see it in the theater but that one yeah I, i'll, we'll, I'll wait we'll to see, see. yeah it's got a lot of buzz but uh, i'll wait to see who what people I, say about it <laughs> and, 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 yeah and that's and that is not a serious like uh, award-winning movie either it is just a movie for the sake of movie and you know what why not why not it, it could be it could be so bad it's good that kind of thing mm-hmm. um how creed are you interested in creed at all I haven't seen the first two, so no. Okay, same here. Right, <laughs> I, yeah, I've, heard, same I've, here. I've heard the first two movies are really good, so and I, I like Sylvester Stallone and uh, Michael B. Jordan. Um, so yeah, I, I, I may eventually see them. I, I always planned on seeing Creed movies, but sure. I, I haven't yet. Uh, there's a lot of movies that are, I've been planning on seeing that I haven't seen. So, yeah, one of my, like, yeah, one of my I, big I things. Say, mm-hmm. Oh, go, go ahead, ahead, go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say uh, one of my big things uh, this year is to maybe watch watch more movies uh i uh it uh just kind of watch more movies this year and not not say i'm going to going to watch them actually do it but yeah what were you gonna say (laughs) oh i was just gonna tie in with what you said uh with creed of course sylvester stallone is not in this uh in this uh version of uh of uh uh spinoff of the rocky whatever universe Mm -hmm. um but he is starring in tulsa which uh, you have recommended before on the show. Yeah. And I got to say, I saw a clip of that randomly come across my YouTube. And like, I had been meaning to watch it, but I really need to watch it. Cause I, that was, it was like perfect. It was like, uh, it was really, it was like, yeah. damn, that's good. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to shout out uh, to yeah. the thing that you had. Yeah. Had to- yeah. Tulsa King. Yeah. That's the new show on Paramount plus. It's a, uh, a co-creation between, uh, uh, Tyler or Taylor Sheridan from uh, Yellowstone fame and uh, Terrence Winter from Sopranos. Uh, they're both uh, co-creators of the show. And it's got that, that nice combination of comedy and serious. You got the serious uh, mafia story and then the kind of the wacky getting uh, fish, uh, fish out of water kind of story of, uh, you know, New York mafia guy in Tulsa, Oklahoma, <laughs> trying to, right. Build build his mafia empire, um, which uh, Stallone could do comedy and serious stuff uh, very well. Uh, so yeah, um, I just watched the ninth episode. Uh, the tenth episode, tenth and final episode for the season, comes out this Sunday. So after Sunday, you could binge watch the whole thing. <laughs> nice. Not, well, I know my Sunday is going to be looking like anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Scream, I don't know. I put that as a maybe only because like I didn't. Uh, OK, so I've got two things going against me. One is I wasn't really big into horror until recently um, or knew that I actually liked it. And it actually turns out a lot of the stuff that I, I liked anyway was horror anyway, um, more in the psychological uh, psych, psyche sphere kind of thing, which we covered ad nauseum. Um, but uh, like I, I don't pretend like I haven't seen the first Scream movies. Of course I have. It's just like. Just like when you're growing up, of course, you saw the, you know, at least one or two or three Freddy Krueger or Friday the 13th or like that kind of thing. That was like one of the unique ones to make it into the uh, OOs or late 90s, I think, and, and into the OOs, something like that. I can't remember, but uh, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I have a maybe. Um, well, how about you? Are you a big Scream fan? I've seen the first two. Um, the first one was really good, uh, but... Since Wes Craven's passed away and he obviously is not involved in this one, um, yeah. who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah. As far as, as far as this list, as far as horror, the one that stands out for me is Evil Dead Rise, uh, yeah. which, mm-hmm. which is uh, looks looks good. Uh, it's got the endorsement of Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, so uh, that one looks good. Uh, the next installment of John Wick, uh, obviously. Um, I, I've enjoyed all all three so far, so I'll definitely see it. Now, as far as theater, probably not. <laughs> uh, a lot of these, a lot of these, like Warner Brothers and 
Disney um, used to. There was like a four to six months turnaround before they came out on streaming. Now it's yep. a, mo- a month. So it's like if right. you wait a month, you could see it in your comfort of your own home. So <laughs> I think, yeah, and I think that goes with that. And I think we're still figuring that out because we've kind of covered it a little bit here and there uh, on like the whole streaming thing. You would think by now they would have the streaming movie thing down pat, but they, no, they, they don't. And I, uh, one thing I would say, I, it seems like the ones, the the Disney movies that do really not so good um, are definitely out. Like, I remember um, that Strange World or whatever, that one was coming out like Thanksgiving weekend. And like by Christmas, you, I, I'm pretty sure you could see it um, on Disney Plus. So, yeah. So, like, maybe if it's a better property, like, for example, Avatar, Avatar's not going to be on streaming for a very long time. Uh, I can get almost guarantee that like not anytime soon. That's for sure. Like uh, it might be out maybe a little quicker than it was like 10 years ago. Um, but it's still, they're still, they know how to keep winding it out uh, to make the most amount of money. That's, that's that kind of movie anyway. But yeah, uh, I hear you for sure. Uh, sorry. I didn't have a point there, but uh, me and the kiddos have been waiting uh, for a very long time to see Shazam two um, come out and, uh, that's just like I'm not going to claim that it's anything anywhere near this or that. I don't really care. I'm going to see it with the kiddos. So like that's like a, a definitely uh, going to see in the theater for sure. Um, but how about uh, were there any other horror movies that you saw on this list or or sci-fi or even geek uh, that you that you're looking forward to? Uh, the third installment of Guardian of the Galaxy. Uh, Guardians of the okay. Galaxy. Yeah, that's uh, the third installment with. Uh, yeah. James Gunn uh, at the helm. Uh, that should be uh, should be good uh, as long as they keep the quality of the first two. I'll uh, I'll enjoy that. Um, the new um, Into the Spider Verse uh, Spider Man movie will probably be uh, entertaining. Uh, sure. but we didn't we didn't well we meant uh, we should have talked about uh, Ezra Miller Miller for our cringe year <laughs> in oh, review, God. but yeah. uh, but there's uh, the Flash coming up which. <laughs> I, I the from all uh, every indication they're talking about how great it is so uh, that may be something to watch. Uh, Indiana Jones and the AARP uh, is coming out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's a senior AARP for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, I have. I, I don't know about you, but like, I, and without regard to anything else, like to me, like I just. I've kind of already made this this line in the sand. Like I did see Crystal Skull, and like, it was terrible. And I kind of just made up my mind in between now and then that that it would be, you know, I just want to I just want to remember Indy and his dad, you know, riding off in the sunset, um, you know, uh, and then that's the end, that's the end the installment for that for me. So I have no in, no 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 interest in in uh, seeing. Um, Maybe it's good. I don't know if it's good and the normies like it. Everybody says, okay, you got to see it. Then maybe I might change mm-hmm. my mind, but probably not. Uh, there's yeah. just so many other movies that are coming out this year that I have way more interest in for sure. Yeah. yeah um, and, uh, and dumb ones yeah. too, like for sure. Yeah. Like I'll take, I'll, I'll absolutely admit to that. Uh, some of them are kid, kiddo related, but we'll see. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll see. Yeah. And we're both uh, Nolan fans. So I'm sure we'll both see yep. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Yep. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, that, uh, I, I like Aquaman, so uh, that first Aquaman, so I'll definitely see the second one. Probably not in a theater, but well, I'll, I'll see it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I am curious about Blue Beetle. Um, I'm curious about that one. I'm curious about. Uh, I was trying to see the other ones. Like, I really, how I really hope Evil Dead is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I am looking forward to Super Mario Brothers, um, and even Elemental, uh, more for the kiddos. Uh, but uh, I think Dune was like the last one, and then I had a lot of maybes, um, some solid nos, um, like the Marvels. I don't uh, maybe uh, no, probably not. Yeah. I don't really care. Yeah, um, I never uh, when when the the two big Avengers movies were coming out, and they sandwiched Captain America in between or Captain Marvel in between those, and so everybody's like, you have to see it. You'll be lost if you uh, with that last Avengers movie. I was okay. like, if you don't see it, I was like, no, I won't. No, I won't. <laughs> I don't want to see that movie. Uh, so yeah, I, I haven't. I still haven't seen Captain Marvel, so uh, that's a big no for me on the Marvels. 
Um, I think they're putting together all the Marvels that I have no interest in into one movie. Right. I, I still have no damn right. interest in seeing it. You, you, you mean you're putting all the people together for all the movies that I didn't see? Okay, cool. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know what? But if you, it, but, you know, being fair, if that's your jam, hey, that's that's great. You know, uh, if you get some pleasure from it, that's awesome. Nothing wrong with that. It's just uh, different strokes for different folks, for sure. Yep. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna, like, I, I probably will sneak out. Uh, probably not this week. Well, we'll see. I don't know. I, 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 I want to try to, like you were saying, I do want to go back to seeing mo- more movies. Um, mm-hmm. my only problem that I have is that, um, there used to be a cheap theater, <laughs> a, mm-hmm. a few of them around St. Louis, mm-hmm. and I don't think there is anymore, uh, which kind of sucks because you can kind of take your time and maybe go see something that wasn't all that great, you know, something you don't want to spend $20 on. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. to see anyway i just thought this was cool um definitely looking yeah. forward to uh to dune um and uh i i am curious about megan uh cocaine bear just because they're stupid mm-hmm. and they could be awesome mm-hmm. just because john wick like you said mission impossible you didn't say anything about that but like oh, i yeah. am mm-hmm. that's just because like uh every mission impossible movie uh that's made it's just entertaining um mm-hmm. You know, is it is it as sophisticated as um, the James Bond series? No, uh, but then 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 again, Daniel Craig James Bond has gotten a lot more cerebral. And anyway, doesn't matter. But um, that's yeah. that's one that's that's always yeah. batted about. Like, who's going to be the next James Bond? Mm-hmm. Nobody knows. Anyway, yeah, I know. I know. I know. There's big fans of Fast and Furious. I never really got into the series. Um, same thing with Transformers. I was more of a GI Joe kid. Uh, more more so the comic book than the cartoon, but uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I've never seen a Transformer movie, and uh, I don't think I'll change on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Transformers is one that it's kind of like I mean they can make it, but I'm not. I mean I watched the. God, it seems like they made a million of them, but like I watched the first couple, and it's like they were okay, and then it was just like I just don't. I'm not not even nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so um, you out and oh, and uh, so you out in the audience. If you have uh, something that the, you're dying to see uh, from this list, let us know. If it's not on the list, um, let us know as well uh, down in the comments. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's just the tip of the iceberg, I'm sure. But yeah. Craven the Hunter, I uh, I will be very curious to see how that does, and just in general, like not that I care to see it because I probably won't. Um, I'll probably, definitely probably see it if it's if it's if it's okay or better. Yep. And uh, it, once it comes to streaming, because I want to really see if Sony has it. I want to see if they can make repeat bangers, you know, uh, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I want to see if uh, a big meme like Morbid Time comes out of it. <laughs> Maybe Mine it's too. it's it's Craven Time. Maybe they could work something together with uh, White Castle for the Crave case. <laughs> the Crave, <laughs> like, uh, the like, Craven case. <laughs> yeah, they did that with Harold and Kumar, I think, okay. uh, for sure. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. Like, if it's just it, one, it, is it so bad, so terrible <laughs> that it becomes its own uh, phenomenon? Mm-hmm. Or two, is there some meat there and uh, some seriousness? Because mm-hmm. we'll see. I mean, the, the, I have a lot of opinions about the Spider Verse and like what Sony could have done. Um, and I still have yet to see Venom, too. Um, but mm-hmm. from what I understand, it was not as good as Venom 1. Uh, and I don't really want that Venom 1 to be sullied because it was unique. Uh, actually, Jeremy Renner, um, he was, uh, he played, uh, didn't he play uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Venom? No, that was Tom Hardy. No, you're right, Tom Hardy. Ah, yeah. Way off. Anyway, yeah. yeah oh, and, uh, uh, and uh, I, I guess he's over the worst of it, but prayers out to Jeremy Renner for. Uh, his accident that he had with the snowplow uh, at the beginning of this oh, year. Horrific, uh, horrific accident. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah and uh, I noticed some people were making jokes, and I, if you're going to do black or black humor or um, do something like that, it's it's got to be funny. If it doesn't, <laughs> it's it really comes off poorly. I was watching this one um, uh, this one YouTuber, and he made a joke. <laughs> that wasn't funny about the mm-hmm. Jerry Mariner situation. And I decided I would never see another video of his. Um, so yeah, oh, be yeah. careful, be careful with your, with your humor. And uh, yeah, if 
like I said, um, you know, leave, <laughs> leave black humor up to the professionals. Uh, <laughs> the, those guys don't always hit it out of the park either. Uh, but no. yeah, it, 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 and it's, it's a little too soon, way too soon to be making jokes about it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, growing from Wisconsin, uh, like snowplow accidents and like that kind of thing. It's like, if you know what a snowplow does, like it's, um, it's not, well, it's just, it's a it's very poor taste. Uh, for that but in any case yeah uh absolutely we uh we hope the best wish for the best uh for jeremy uh and and family um hopefully you know hopefully he can he can uh um you know walk walk away let's hope let's yeah hope for the best yeah and no, absolutely yeah. and he uh from what i understand he gives back to his to that community uh quite a bit so yeah and uh, yep Yep, he wrote Shotgun or, or started a lot of movies that I've always enjoyed. I'm sure you have too. Um, big big fan. Yeah, and there's uh, a, kinda... and he has a series out um, on Paramount Plus as well called I think uh, Mayor of Kingstown or something like that. Uh, okay. that I've been been meaning to watch. Um, that's on the same thing that the Tulsa King's on. So. Uh, but yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, what's what's next on our list? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I I found this article. Uh, just a, a very interesting. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but uh, basically, um, this kind of goes back, and it's just a little bit about talking about how Terminator One and Two um, kind of did the way that they structured the movie. It just was an interesting read uh, to me, um, but basically, it kind of goes into it. And actually, um, and I didn't say this to you beforehand, but um, uh, Terminator really is a horror movie. So that that's mm-hmm. just it. Just has some very interesting takes. On classic stuff that's um, that's I'm sure uh, growing older as we as, uh, as we speak um, year mm-hmm. after year, so it's just very interesting. Um, and I think there was a that, but just a really cool article to kind of go in and, and go in uh, read about uh, the thing. Good grief! I sound like uh, <laughs> never mind. Uh, I won't I won't I won't cross that line with a joke. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, kind of going on like what what. Uh, I guess well we could we could start hitting your uh, um, your horror. Um. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in in keeping with my uh, seeing more things, uh, seeing more movies, uh, I've got a subscription to Shutter through Amazon, and I hadn't been using that enough. Uh, it's pretty cheap. It's like five bucks a month. And um, so yeah, the I watched a couple of movies uh, that were recommended from a podcast. Uh, the first one was this a uh, Wounded Fawn. Very surreal, very low budget kind of movie. Um, it's kind of a throwback. Uh, the the way it's filmed is uh, it's sort of like it looks very much like a, a 60s or a 70s movie uh, with the film grain. There's like um, um, uh, uh, film elements that are in it. Sort of like you know when you're watching an old movie, you'll see like uh, like little hairs right. or, or yeah, like like artifacts. <laughs> Artifacts right, in it right. is yep, intentionally yep. In, intentionally put into the movie uh, to create that effect uh, to make it seem like a an old movie. So so and there there's one scene where uh, the the character pulls out a cell phone. And you go oh man <laughs> you get kind of disoriented because <laughs> you're like wait this is a seven no okay this is a current day movie but uh, yeah. but yeah it was uh, very surreal the um, a uh, very wild horror movie. Uh, definitely recommend uh, if you're on the the more adventurous side when it comes to uh, to movies. Uh, it doesn't really explain things very clearly. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like I said, it's very dreamlike, very surreal. Um, at times, you're like, "What's going on here?" Uh, by the end of the movie, it all came together for me. Uh, I I'd pretty much figured the whole thing out. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you're looking for a, a movie that you could uh, just set back with your beer and watch, this is probably not that movie. Uh, if you want to be a little bit more engaged and uh, be um, kind of challenged as far as what's going on, it's it's definitely recommended. Uh, next, I paired that with another movie, uh, Resurrection, uh, which uh, is about a woman uh, being stalked uh, by someone from her past. Sounds like a, maybe even a, <laughs> uh, you know, I forget the an oxygen movie, uh, you know, off of that network, okay. that's that woman network. It sounds like that kind of movie, but it is also very, has times where it's very surreal. It's very, very dark at times. 
it's and... not it's not your uh not, not your typical movie uh and the the final scenes of the movie will have you scratching your head as well uh okay. very very highly recommended uh if you're like uh kind of thought thought provoking horror movies both of these are uh good ones to watch um there's a um, podcast i have linked to this called uh colors of the dark uh okay. podcast uh this is a the podcast through fangoria magazine uh it's uh done by Elric and uh, or Rebecca. Uh, they also did a pod- podcast uh, that I watched uh, a while back called Shockwaves. Uh, in fact, I was watching Shockwaves before the pandemic and um, they they put it on hiatus, I think uh, maybe because of the, the pandemic, but also they had a third host on there that got me too. Uh, I think he was up to... He was kind of uh, misusing his his power uh, in the horror community uh, and uh, doing uh, some things. I won't get into it because I didn't really re- research it that much. I don't know sure. if the allegations were true or not, but he's no longer with them <laughs> on their podcast. They restarted it and renamed the podcast. Uh, and I didn't realize until just recently that they had... Um, uh, had restarted it. They're, they're already up to 104 okay. episodes, and uh, so so. Uh, and I, I'd I'd miss miss having a regular horror podcast that I listen to. Um, so this is highly recommended. They're both PhDs. They also the both both of the the hosts are active in the horror community as far as making movies. Uh, um, Rebecca has just made a horror movie that's also on Shutter called Glorious. Uh, but uh, I w- I listened to their top ten horror movies of two- 2022 in uh, both Resurrection and A Wounded Fawn was on one of their I think it was Elric's um, uh, top ten list both those movies so that's where I got the recommendation so yeah if you're looking for some horror movies maybe listen to that top ten list because obviously if they put it in their top ten is probably going to be pretty decent. Um, but yeah, uh, I would dec- definitely recommend this uh, this podcast along with Shudder if you're into horror. Uh, Shudder had a very small uh, catalog of movies, and uh, most of them weren't that great. Uh, but they've built up that that catalog to where it's it's uh, the go-to streaming service for horror movies. And oh, in fact, uh, in fact, my favorite underground horror movie that. Uh, I've discussed with Mike off the air of maybe covering at one point possession is actually coming to um, Shutter. I think this year. So whenever mm-hmm. it com- comes out, maybe we could uh, do our our, our uh, main channels thing on on that since it's going to be readily, so. readily available for everybody at I, that point. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's that's one thing I wish I could get more into was um, podcasts. But good God, I well <laughs> I. That's the problem is like I was doing podcasts before when nobody else was doing them. Like only the only the nerds, only the nerds were doing them. Like where um, Leo Laporte, whatever. There was like a jump there from tech TV. Anyway, it didn't matter. But uh, nowadays, well, I guess I do do podcasts. I, I don't know what you call uh, just being on YouTube and following all all the people that you follow. Like it's just a a panoply of of choices. Cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, I was going to say, um, well, I, I guess I can get in this real quick and then we could do our uh, recommendations mm-hmm. um, or, or nah, actually we have some we have some more to cover. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah you know, let's 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 do uh, let's do physical media here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, MVD, they they're a uh, um, their their brand is Arrow Video. They do some specialty blu-rays dvds and 4k uh um you know some of them is like true romance they've done a special edition of that 12 monkeys uh various ones they have a big sale going on until monday january 16th so uh you've got a few days uh when this comes out this uh podcast comes out uh to get in on this i was kind of going through there and i've seen way too many that i want to get a hold of so um the the prices on a are pretty decent uh, there's uh, but yeah you can kind of scroll through there there's up to 80 percent off on on various ones 
but yeah, I'm a big pro proponent for physical media. A lot of our um, main channel uh, podcasts are, are benefited from all the extras that I've seen from our uh, my collection of uh, uh, Blu-rays. So, so yeah, if you're into physical media, definitely check it out. Especially if you're into the nerd stuff like we are, uh, and why wouldn't you be if you're listening to our <laughs> our channel here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, th this, is, uh, this is always good to have. Um, sorry, I get distracted by the stupid thing. Uh, all right. Yep. Oh man. Interesting. All right. Uh, <laughs> Getting. Put the credit card away. <laughs> cool, cool. I think we were rolling up to uh, you. You were getting, uh, and I know he had pinged me on the break, and I just didn't. I think I was out and about. Um, uh, but, but at some point, we we want to do this gaming thing. But in the <laughs> meantime, you have been uh, steadfastly uh, following, uh, or not following, but you've been uh, you actually gaming, uh, and I've been trying to do that a little bit more too uh, on my end as well. But. Uh, so, yep. <laughs> so what's going on with this with this yeah. version of Yakuza here? I'll yeah. mute it here. Yeah, you can go ahead and play it, and uh, maybe uh, guess. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very strange. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a it's uh, it's a uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon. It's the uh, newest installment of Yakuza. Uh, in this, um, mostly uh, most of theirs is a kind of beat 'em up games. Uh, but this one's an RPG, um, and uh, much like other Yakuza games, they, they're they very bizarre. They get into some weird territory. So I thought I would, um, as I play it, uh, spotlight the weirdest thing or craziest thing I, I've seen in the game so far. And this week, I fought a group of uh, Yakuza dressed as babies. They uh, have the fetish of being taken care of as babies. Uh, so uh, we're playing a little bit of footage here, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you actually have to. They're 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 tough. Uh, I almost got knocked out <laughs> fighting these guys, but uh, I I can't come out on top. This isn't my game footage, but uh, but right. yeah, this is. <laughs> I found it online, but yeah, this will be kind of a recurring theme uh, where I, I spotlight the. Uh, craziness that uh that is yakuza i'm sure there's plenty of installments uh i play it um maybe two to three hours each week so it's a uh, kind of slow going because it's i think it's a, a 60 hour game so oh, so i'll be yeah. i'll be playing it for for a while here <laughs> i'm sure nice 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 yeah no that that's cool like uh there, i've been wanting to get in and i, I think i told you i reloaded my machine i actually <coughs> excuse me I downloaded a few cool cool games, uh, and of course with the PC you can uh, play whatever's on your Xbox too, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yakuza is very uh, uh, extensible, like uh, Grand Theft Auto, I think, uh, mm -hmm. but newer, um, I, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And that's cool, very cool. Yeah, what, uh, keep keep your eyes peeled. We're at some point we're going to try to do some kind of a, a, a video game live session or something like that, mm -hmm. um, just, to see, just to see how it goes. Cool, cool. All right. Um, I think we're moving on. I'll 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 just cover this real quick. Pretty much the same thing um, uh, that has been going on uh, with uh, Andrew Tate that uh, that Thomas uh, was uh, talking about. This one is basically the uh, the the uh, Logan Paul uh, equivalent. Um, Coffeezilla basically took him down. You know, he uh, if you're not familiar with Coffeezilla, and again, this is one of Thomas's YouTube picks. Uh, from 2022 to follow, um, he just goes by the by by the by the book, uh, letter by letter, fact by fact, um, lays it out, shows you what's going on, um, yeah. leaves a leaves a, an amazing amount of openness for even certain people in this to make it right or, or whatever. And I think yeah. Logan Paul is on the verge of making it right because, like, he just. The, the videos, and I won't we'll go over the whole thing. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll kind of recommend like a more summarized version of, with the Tozy in a minute here. But basically, um, there's back and forth, back and forth. Logan Paul is, he thinks he's a social media uh, uh, prima donna, whatever, or God. I don't know. M maybe he thought he could just kind of ride this wave out like he does everything else. But no, nah, I don't think so. Uh, this is because there's very serious things tied to this 
And um, I think the the end of the day, I think the best thing is that, uh, uh, you know, he would make it right and uh, give the people back their money uh, who were scammed. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. that's within his power. Um, that's what I heard. Um, there's an apology that he he did in a phone call with copies. That was the last update I heard. Yeah. Um, and uh, and Logan Paul rightfully capitulated and and bowed down to reality because the mm-hmm. version of reality that he was spinning uh, was not quite on top of it. Anyway, mm-hmm. but if you want to like a short summary, um, these two videos uh, from Atozi cover it pretty nicely up to this point. Um, and they're they're instead of like going back. Because Coffeezilla puts in work, uh, he does not do this stuff lightly. He he gets his facts. You can see the whole SBF. That was a whole freaking meltdown too. We we didn't cover that, but um, or we covered the very yeah. end of that. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah, that's a very expensive cringe. But uh, right. yeah, yeah, uh, Coffeezilla, like like you said, I recommend it. He he does deep dives and uh, expo exposes on uh, yep. crypt, cryptocurrency and on NFTs. And like you say, the uh, Logan Paul got into um, a NFT uh, that never actually got up and running called um, Crypto Zoo. And uh, like you said, those those videos, he does a uh, Coffeezilla did a deep dive. Logan threatened to sue him and blah blah blah. And uh, but yeah, they they <laughs> uh, Logan and um, Coffeezilla got on the phone and and kind of worked work things out and i think uh logan's gonna put out a apology video but yeah he uh he got away with um going into that japanese forest and finding a dead body he was able to ride ride the wave like uh mike said and kind of throw that under under and just kind of ride it out and uh, came out smelling like a rose but but you can't get out of the snare of Coffeezilla that easily. <laughs> well, I tell you what, if there's one thing that that uh, really gets people, uh, it seems to be like at the start of the decade, ten years ago. Well, if you talked about crypto, nobody knew what you're talking about. But nowadays, it seems that it used to be the get rich thing. <laughs> it seems like it's the thing to bring you down, mm-hmm. or or get you uh, locked up for a long, long, long. Who knows? Who knows? But. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like Logan Paul isn't stupid. Guy's very smart. Um, you got to be smart if you're going to be in, on YouTube for as long as you have, as long as he has been. Uh, you know, he, so fortunately, I guess, I guess all things being equal, if he does make it right or whatever he does, or you know, uh, kind of comes clean, I guess, like legitly, not not like lip service. Um, you know, may, maybe uh, maybe good on him. I guess he's got good. He's got good people around him that that are are <laughs> giving him good advice, like common sense, reasonable, good faith advice. Uh, and and thankfully, unlike other train wrecks, um, he is uh, he has been following it. I guess at the end of the day, kind of kind of not really, but <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Anyway, this is just a drama buttoned up with a toesy. You just want a short, short, quick, and simple. Boom, boom, you're good. And then you'll pretty much be on top of it. Um, uh, but anyway, moving on. I think we're going to roll into our picks of the week for yeah. other media. I think that's all we have for. Yeah, we cover Ethan Ralph, all that stuff. We cover the mm-hmm. movies. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, that's where we're at. So, uh, uh, anything else to add before we hop into that uh, mode? Yeah, I think I uh, give you a link for Harry Potter. Uh, they're going to oh, reboot that's it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just a quick right. thing. It's it's a rumor that they're rebooting Harry Potter. I think it's kind of silly uh, of rebooting it. Uh, I, it. I think the rumor is that they're going to redo the books, uh, Harry Potter books as movies. It's like it's not it has not been that long ago, and those movies are you know <laughs> pretty definitive. I, I don't think you can improve on those. Uh, it's just kind of a money grab at this point. Uh, to maybe reboot those, uh, but yeah, it's. <laughs> I, I I I don't think there's anything wrong with the original uh, series of movies. Um, now, if you were going to, um, my idea would be to if you're going to maybe stream it, maybe do, uh, you know, a, a series and uh, spend a, a, a you know a season on each each book. That that would be an idea. Um, that would be give you something a little extra because everybody complains that they that the movies kind of you know you know it's sort of like the cliff notes of of the books and they don't you know get into all the stuff that the books do 
um, that would be a be a great idea. But but yeah, as far as uh, just doing the movies again, I don't think there would be any added value to that. No, I, I agree with you. Um, there, there's no need to. It's too early. Um, there, they've got plenty of ways to make money from other stuff that they've been trying. Um, my understanding, I am not a Harry Potter nerd. Um, nothing wrong with it. I just never got it. Well, I was a little bit too old to get into it, uh, to to catch fire with me personally. But, um, you know, uh, like that's what you say. It's a rumor. I agree. It didn't, didn't really make any sense. Um, but uh, I think there is a new Harry Potter game coming out pretty soon. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what it's called, but I know that Hogwarts Hogwarts Legacy. Yes, that comes so out Harry Potter. Yep, comes out February tenth. Um, yeah, I, I I'm too old for Harry Potter, but I'm I'm way into it. Uh, the <laughs> I I, I uh, got into it in the books back in the day, uh, early two thousands. I was in a uh, a book uh, forum uh, where we discussed books, and uh, we were all into fantasy, horror, and science fiction. And uh, they they kept saying that I should read because they were all reading the Harry Potter books. They recommended it to me. I said I don't read YA. I'm not I'm not into uh, you know kid books. And they said no, it, this is different. So I did it. I did enjoy the books, and then uh, I did watch the movies. So so yeah, I, I've been a fan, and I'm looking forward to the game. But uh, but yeah, we can get into our other recommendations. Um, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, if if you remember our uh, Halloween episode of our uh, podcast, we uh, talked about a couple of black metal movies. One being Death <laughs> Deathgasm, and there was going to be a, a sequel that got canceled. Um, now this may be the sequel uh, in comic book form. This is by the uh, writer director of the movie. Uh, I picked up the, it came out last week. I picked up the first issue. Uh, the price of it was $6.66. I think uh, <laughs> it's a little bit longer than your average comic book. But uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it. It had still that, that goofy humor um, that the movie has and lots of gore. Um, and they have a new uh, bass player and guitarist uh, <laughs> to fill out the band now because uh if you watch the movie, they they met their demise. Um, now I'll leave it up to you to read the comic book to see if they survive this issue or not. Uh, but yeah, uh, I recommend it. If you like the movie, uh, I'd recommend uh, the comic book. Uh, but yeah, if you didn't like the movie, you're not gonna like the comic book. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, word up. Cool, cool, cool. And this this one comes out. Uh, if you're watching it Wednesday, it has just come out today. Uh, it's uh, by uh, Paul Levitz and Alan Davis. I'm a huge, huge fan of Alan Davis as an artist. He's one of my top, maybe top three artists, if not my uh, number one. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's great to have him back doing a, a limited series. And Paul Levitz, I haven't read anything by him. Evidently, he's an old school DC writer. Um, okay. So you have an old school DC writer uh, writing uh, for the Avengers. Uh, a limited series, and then you have the great talent of uh, UK. He's a British artist, um, Alan Davis, uh, doing lending his art style to it. Uh, so two uh, titans of the comic book world coming to de- together on Avengers on a limited series story. I- I'm sure it's going to be great. <clears throat> Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. And then our my last recommendation as far as comic books is. Starman Compendium 2. I just read this over uh, the holiday break. It's, um, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, almost 1,500 pages long. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, so you're getting your money's worth uh, out of this thing. Uh, But yeah, Starman uh, is from, it started in the 90s and ended early 2000s. It runs uh, 81 issues. Uh, It also includes all the uh, limited series and everything that's kind of ancillary to the Starman world. So you can read the Compendium 1 and 2 and get the full Starman story. And you can tell that the the writer, uh, James Robertson, had a clear vision of what he wanted to do with the character. 
Uh, he's the son of the Silver Age uh, Justice Society guy uh, of America, uh, mm -hmm. Star Starman. It's his son uh, that takes over the mantle. Kind of uh, he he didn't he didn't really want to be Starman, uh, but his brother <laughs> his brother that was going to take over the mantle ends up uh, getting killed. So he has to step up and step up into his place to avenge his brother and become Starman for Opal City, uh, which is the name of the city that Starman's based out of. And it tells a complete story. Uh, it's a full story arc uh, for Starman uh, for beginning uh, of him being a superhero to the end. Uh, there is a definitive end to his saga. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's well worth reading. It's, it, it, I think it elevates itself from just the regular comic book writing, uh, as far as, you know, the, you know, a lot of times, uh, when you're writing say Batman or Superman or Spider-Man, um, there, you have various writers writing it. So you can't really tell a, a complete story. You can tell a kind of a smaller level story uh and make a, a definitive story arc for that character but you know that later on someone's going to pick up the mantle and write a you know carry on that character later on and tell various stories so you can't really s give a a complete beginning and end story to a character uh where they're able to do with this particular character in starman uh very well written mm -hmm. um Highly, highly recommended. I I didn't uh, get into it when it was first first came out, uh, but it it kept getting recommended to me. So when it came out in these compendium editions, I I snagged it up. Uh, what's different from this and say the uh, Spawn om omnibuses is that in the Starman compendium, it's very inclusive. It it includes all the covers as well <laughs> from oh, uh, the the Spawn series. Uh, do, it kind of keeps doesn't put the uh, covers in it, but uh, but yeah, this has everything everything you want to do uh, want to know, and in um, this this uh, compendium on the uh, some of the stories are co-written by David S. Goyer, which we're familiar mm -hmm. with because he wrote the uh, Batman, uh, or at least co-wrote the Batman series or movies with uh, Christopher Nolan, and uh, he's he's very much a big um he, he, a lot of the any comic book movie you could look at he may have a hand in and writing he wrote uh all of the uh i think blade movies as well and uh oh, and uh after after starman uh james robertson uh the writer of it also has uh gotten into writing uh for movies and television he doesn't do as much as far as comic books anymore so but yeah uh that's that's those are my recommendations I think um, I think you'll uh, the top of the list is Starman, a classic comic book. Then there's Avengers, and then uh, <laughs> Deathgasm. If if you're that niche group that uh, if you're uh, into that, you know you're you know whether or not you're into that or not. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right, going into mine. Uh, <clears throat> I had oh, that's my library. Yeah. So. Uh, the yeah so uh mine were i i got a lot of books uh that i went through this uh, over the break um uh, one was uh by bv larson it was uh, lost colonies uh the series uh it's just very good um it, it kind of it, it it's it's a classic sci-fi adventure i guess uh like world building um it's it, it's it was good uh, but i i really enjoyed it um, going all the way through from Battle Cruiser to Dreadnought to Star Carrier, basically the premise is uh, at a at a very blown out uh, perspective, fifty thousand foot view, humanity once upon a time spread out among the stars, and now we're getting to the point like where they used to be able to get there instantaneously, but that went away, and now they've kind of been isolated, and now it's kind of like they're coming back around and encountering. Earth humans uh, or, or solar system humans uh, versus like whatever. So there's quite a bit of differences there uh, between the, the two, but kind of sets up some campiness a little bit. Uh, but it was just a fun romp uh, through these three books. Uh, Dreadnought was book two and then Star Carrier book three. 
Um, then um, one that I was uh, I got to wrap up a little bit earlier uh, in December. I don't think I covered it. I mentioned it. Um, the very last book in the Expeditionary Force series that I've highlighted, book 15, there's like another 10, uh, five or 10 books uh, that uh, deal within the same universe, but with a different offshoot of the main storyline. Anyway, mm-hmm. very good wrap up. Um, I look forward to what Craig Allenson has uh, in, in the future. Um, that might be sci-fi. Uh, I was reading one of his other books that had nothing to do with this, this series. Um, it was all right. Uh, it was all right. Uh, wasn't as... Uh, uh, I'll probably get into it a little bit later uh, in the year, revisit it. And then one that was just like a, just kind of blew my socks off that I, I really enjoyed, uh, w- which reminds me a lot about the thing uh, where it's one versus one versus the other um, and nobody can get along. Basically, uh, a billionaire uh, goes, uh, gets this big spaceship. And this is, a, of course, in this universe, they can travel the stars or whatever. So they go out to this far universe, to this far planet. They, they check it out. Um, didn't do too much. And then they're coming back. And the, the story has nothing to do with where they went. Uh, it has to do with coming back to Earth. Because of the time dilation involved, um, Earth has progressed to like 800 years in the future. So they come back to this. They're, they're coming back in the solar system they're not getting the signs and signals that they're they're hoping to um and then they make it to earth and then uh well it kind of goes from there and it goes in it's a very quick eight hours mm-hmm. so eight hours and 15 minutes whatever um very quick uh very quick book to go through and, and it has you hanging um just a very good book on on survivors and that um so it kind of it it, it was ironic to play into the 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 thing um to like where you're not quite sure who is who yeah. <laughs> got that dynamic uh going in it's just it's very fun of all the three books i would say this one by uh, uh joshua Del- dalzell and he has done other ones that i have uh i don't know if i recommended them but anyway he's a favorite that i like to uh revisit this is like one i think 2016 i think it was 20 it was a it was a little uh up oh, 28 2018 i guess well whatever it was, it was a little bit but uh good Good uh, single kind of single book story, kind of like the uh, the Invincible. That was very satisfying. This one is uh-huh. also very. Um, and then uh, what I've been watching, uh, I just fell into this Ragnarok on Netflix. Basically, this is a um, this has nothing to do with DC, nothing to do with Marvel, nothing to do with any comic book. This is just going off of the myth. Um, of course, it's thousands of years old. However old it is. Uh, it's just kind of a different take on it. It's kind of like a uh, a more serious Smallville, I guess. Um, kind of origin story, I guess, would be the best way to put it. Um, very slow rolling. Um, there's two. I think there's going to be three seasons pretty soon, but there's two seasons for sure. Um, I think they ended at season three. I think that's it. Um, but I kind of fell into this randomly, and like I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, it is in Norway, uh, so it has kind of got that independent kind of feel to it. Um, mm-hmm. It it reminded me a lot of a much much better quality version of like when Netflix started to do the streaming thing. They had um, they had the guy from The Sopranos, uh, Steve Van Zandt, I think is he did a one off. Uh, it was good for a couple seasons. I can't think of the name of it, but it was like it was uh, Lily Hammer. Yeah, Lily Hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? That was kind of dumb, but I enjoyed it. I loved it. Uh, yeah. I, uh, it was it was refreshing and, and interesting. Um, but this is it kind of reminded me of that. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, it, it, very interesting. Um, they, they did a different take on it. And I think that um, you could not get this here in America. It, would ha- it had to be done by, by overseas. It's mm-hmm. just... I don't think that you could find an American or or an industry Hollywood executive that could think like this and produce something like this uh, because there's just too much baggage tied to it. Like, and these guys were just like, well, it's Norwegian, Nor- Norway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so here it is. <laughs> they they could do a damn good story about it. They could. So, like, I am still working my way through the uh, the very end of season one, looking to get on season two. 
I was just a very cool, pleasant surprise, and um, you know, uh, it was it's fun to watch, fun fun to fall into. Yeah. So anyway, that's cool. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen that. Um, yeah, just uh, I didn't uh, prepare for it, but just to run through some of the stuff I've been watching. I've gotten uh, it, it maybe the year of the anime for me because I'm watching okay. uh, three different animes. I'm watching Chainsaw Man, uh, which a lot of people have recommended. Uh, these are all on Hulu that I'm watching. Um, Chainsaw Man's about a uh, guy that merges with a, a chainsaw demon and uh, he fights demons and his hands and head turns into chainsaws. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, very out there, uh, very interesting. Um, it's also, yeah, it's based off of manga. Most of the, all of these are based on mangas. Uh, you got Chainsaw Man. Uh, I'm watching um, the second season of Attack on Titan. I enjoyed the the first season, and I was like, okay, the last uh, last few episodes are gonna come out this year. Might as well catch up and finish up the series. I like it uh yeah uh, you know it's um it's a uh, way big a, a few years ago uh, i don't know if it still has that same uh um excitement about it uh i'm also watching full metal alchemist brotherhood um the original series came out uh back in the early 2000s i really enjoyed it um uh but this uh the difference is um, this is the the newer series that came out in the 10, 000, uh, 2010s. Uh, basically, uh, the manga was coming out at the same time that the original series was. It hadn't finished yet, so the original series had to come up with its own ending um, okay. to it. Uh, Brotherhood uh, takes the manga and translates it all the way through. So it's a true adaption of the manga. Um, and it's been so many years ago that I've seen the the original series that i don't remember it too well uh mm -hmm. so watching this it seems fresh to me I, some of some of the episodes i'm like oh yeah i remember that uh but evidently about midway through about the first 30 episodes is the, the same as the original series uh but the last half is uh brand new and tells a, a different divergent story uh so yeah i've been enjoying all three of those i'm not a huge anime fan uh but i just decided to kind of dive into it the last thing I watched on Hulu was the series Connect. I think uh, we talked about it uh, on a earlier grab bag. It's by Takashi Miike. It's about a um, these body harvesters uh, that uh, grab this guy and start cutting him up for body parts, and he can uh, regenerate his body or re re put together his body. <laughs> and so he escapes, but he leaves his eyeball. Uh, they put it into a uh, another person who turns out to be a serial killer. And uh, that original guy that they stole that body part from uh, can actually see what that serial killer sees. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's called Connect. Um, having trouble finding it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I guess so. maybe maybe connect Hulu. Uh, you might be able to find it that way. Uh, but it's a Korean uh, series um, that uh, that's uh, done. But it's not an anime. You might want to take anime out of there. <laughs> it's probably a yeah. There we go. There we are. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's only six episodes. Of uh, highly entertaining. Uh, if you're familiar with Takashi Miike, he's very out there uh, kind of guy. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, cool. over very the cool. top. You, I never thought that uh, Disney would make a uh, Takashi Miike TV series. Uh, no so kidding. yeah, uh, oh, we're no. living in 2023. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's everything I'm watching on Hulu. Um, I'm also watching on Netflix. I'm watching Wednesday, uh, the Tim Burton adam's family show uh it was rec i wasn't really big about seeing it uh but everybody keeps recommending it so i started watching it and i i enjoyed the first episode so i'll probably continue with that and uh i'm also watching um uh in the other the last thing i'm watching currently is also on netflix called uh we are all dead uh which is which was recommended on that colors uh, of the dark podcast uh by rebecca uh but yeah it's a uh 
Korean show <laughs> about uh, oh, a high, high school, <laughs> about a high school uh, in a zombie outbreak. <laughs> this this one's this one's crazy, man. <laughs> it's a uh, it's very very crazy. Uh, very, very out there. Uh, very. Um, uh, yeah, you don't want the watch. Uh, want the kiddos watching this one? <laughs> nah, probably not. No, 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 probably not. Yeah, that's funny. I right. did. Oh, speaking of that, uh, well, uh, uh, we. I don't know. Did you ever watch uh, Blood Origins or even uh, look into it at all? Oh, uh, the Witcher show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have no Witcher, interest. Big, in, uh, no interest. Yeah, big fat. Yeah, big fat no for me too. But, it, but while that was out. Um, I did take the, I did kind of, I kind of been falling back into Netflix recently, but I did watch season two of Alter Carbon mm-hmm. and it had Andrew Mackey in it. Um, and it was all right. It was all right. It was nowhere near as good as season one. Um, uh, but it was still, uh, it was all right. Um, I wouldn't, there's only two seasons cause they canceled it, but, um, mm-hmm. it was, a. it was all right. Um, it, it was like, uh, probably about as good as you think it would be without the main folks andrew there's nothing wrong with anthony mackie um it's just it's not the same it's just not the same as season one it just wasn't the same anyway didn't recapture that and i was really disappointed too because like there was i was hoping that this could become a, more of a thing but the way they did it um uh, they, they they couldn't do that so it was like definitely a one-off um but uh I'm trying to think of the guy's name. He was in uh, RoboCop. God, good grief. Anyway, it didn't matter, but uh, that's one mm-hmm. uh, That's one that I caught up with on the winter break. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I think that rolls us up to the end of, uh, end of the line. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you say, uh, Thomas? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, if our uh, fans out there have any recommendations, give us a comment down below. Uh, again, give us all your cringe recommendations, all the things that you want to see this year. Um, this is, yeah. I'm proclaiming it, the year of the nerd, or the nerdum. <laughs> this is all about the nerdum. so, uh, no, no more cringe. We've got rid of the cringe. We all got all cringed out last <laughs> year. It's all about the nerdum and, uh, celebrating the nerdum. Uh, this is, uh, we're looking for, uh, bigger, better, and brighter this year. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Really looking forward to, uh, this coming year. There's uh, quite a few movies that are out there that I, I want to see for sure. I'm really looking forward to uh, ones that I have not seen that are on your uh, in your mind, uh, Thomas, <laughs> because you've recommended quite a bunch of uh, awesome, awesome <laughs> movies. So mm-hmm. we'll, uh, with that, uh, I'll be, we'll be signing off. And uh, I've been Mike. And I'm Thomas. And uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Peace out. Peace out.